This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is so good to come together this morning and uh, share worship, no matter where you are, whether you're here in person or coming uh, with the, on our online. We welcome you. Uh, just a couple of announcements. I wanted to remind you that we are collecting uh, funds for our Christmas family, and there's some more information out on the whiteboard. When you leave, you can take a look. Uh, checks or um, gift cards are most welcome and most needed. So um, thank you for being able to bless and love our Christmas family this year. Uh, and I also wanted to mention that the flowers this morning are coming to us from Kathleen Cook in loving memory of her father, who, would, who was Larry Herod. And then um, we also have some birth celebration uh, flowers for Jim Thorns, whose birthday um, is, I'm not sure, because you know I don't do birthday dates well, but anyway, it's now, it's today, it's this weekend, and I know there are some of you in that, out there that are like, I know his birthday, because you guys are just that great like that, um, but anyway, the birthday flowers are from um, Heidi and Mike, Cassie, Stephen, and Jeffrey. Uh, I think that's all the news that I have for this morning, uh, so I would like to invite um, Enola and Katrina to come up and light the advent candle for us this morning. Light one candle for joy because the world is broken and the wait is long but our joy cannot be contained. Like a toddler toppling the thrones of power with a gleeful swipe, joy pierces our silence with song, interrupts our sighing with laughter, unshackles our fumbling feet to dance. My soul magnifies the Lord, Mary whispers, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. So we light one candle because it only takes one, Christ with us. Good job, thank you so much. You may go sit down. Katrina had the hard part too. Thank you for all of your, for serving this morning. Anola and Katrina are part of our mountain movers and they are the group that have been lighting our advent candle uh, this, this advent. Uh, so would like to ask um, Sandy if you would come up and be our voice of the all this morning and I invite the rest of you to stand as you are able and um, join me in the call to worship. Our souls magnify the Lord. Our spirits rejoice in God our Savior. The Mighty One has done great things for us. Holy is God's name. Let us worship God. For God is our maker and our redeemer. His mercy is from generation to generation on those who fear him. Thank you. You may be seated. I want you to please pray with me. Lord, we are grateful and happy to be here, for, here wherever that may be. We hear your invitation to come and to give you our burdens. 
You know us so well that you know our deepest needs. You know where we are weary and tired and despairing. And you know where we need to be lifted up. And as we turn to you in confidence of your guidance, we ask that you open our hearts and, your, and our spirits this day, Lord, to receive your words and to be challenged to serve you. And yet, Lord, even as we ask this, we confess that we have not thought a whole lot about you this week. We've allowed other concerns and worries to crowd our hearts and our heads. We know we've turned our eyes and our backs on how you have called us to be your church. We've wandered away and refused to participate with you to spread love and joy around us. So we ask, Lord, that you forgive us. And as we lift up silently to you, we ask that you hear all the ways that we have wandered and gone against your will. Friends, the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. And so I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. May the God of mercy, who forgives all of our sins, strengthen all of us in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Our scripture this morning from the Old Testament will be Psalm 100. And I will be reading the NIV version. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, this morning uh, we will be doing our offering as always, and uh, we were anticipating that Lucia would be able to join us this morning with her flute, uh, but that was not able to happen this morning, so we've invited her to come another time. Uh, but this, this, just this morning, I want us to think about the offering that we give to the Lord, because it is truly a way of saying thank you. Uh, thank you, God, for life and for love and for the, all of the blessings that we receive of family and friends. I'm always reminded that our Constitution, our Book of Order, says giving has always been that mark of a Christian commitment and a discipleship. The ways in which a believer uses God's gift of material goods, personal abilities, and time should reflect a faithful response to God's self-giving in Jesus Christ and Christ's call to minister and then to share with others in the world. So this morning, as uh, you take a minute uh, to consider what your offering will be and uh, the offering plates are in the back for you to deposit a, an envelope or your gift as you leave. Um, and I invite you just to, I believe John is going to sing something for us this morning or Marianne playing during offering. Marianne will play with us, play us an offering piece this morning. Thank you, Marianne. Let's pray. 
God of love, you abide with us. You are Emmanuel with us. You provide all of our needs and guide us in your ways. Out of gratitude for your care, we bring our gifts before you. We ask that you use them for your work, that all may feast one day at the table of abundance, walk without fear, and drink deeply from the cup of compassion that you and you alone can provide. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So this is our third Sunday in Advent. I am really having a hard time remembering that it's already the third Sunday in Advent. And so far, we have heard the first weekend, which was right after Thanksgiving, we heard from Mark's Gospel and about John the Baptist and the hope of the one coming into the world to save us. Fulfilling God's long hoped for promise, John brought good news. And it centered around the first line of the poem, I believe in the sun, even when it isn't shining. Last week, we focused on the second line of the poem, I believe in love, even when I don't feel it. And we read about Joseph and this uh, man who served as Jesus' earthly father. And we heard about his incredible love beyond any kind of feeling, beyond any kind of emotion, a love that he gave to both Mary and to Joseph, to Jesus. And this week, is the third line of the poem. I believe in God, even when God is silent. This third Sunday is called Joy Sunday as we celebrate and rejoice with Mary. So today God's word comes to us from the gospel of Luke and uh, it, we will be listening to Mary's reaction after she has gone to be with uh, her cousin Elizabeth. And if you remember uh, Elizabeth, was also pregnant, and that's how we ended up with, with John the Baptist. This is coming to us from Luke, chapter 1, verses 40, 46 through 55. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Holy Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their innermost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from the thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but he has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and to his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you please pray with me? God, we pray that you do open our ears and our minds and our hearts to hear your message today. May this familiar passage bring new life and new renewal to us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So as at the time that the angel came to Mary, it had been about 400 years, give or take, without any word from the Lord coming to the people of Israel uh, through a prophet, which was how they typically heard from God. So to the waiting Jews of the day, it may have seemed that God was indeed silent. And in the years between what we call the Old Testament and the New Testament, uh, the Babylons had, con you know, you know, they had con conquered, they had dispersed the Israelites, they had been returned. But since then, in those 400 years, the Jews had been repeatedly conquered. They had been repeatedly uh, assaulted and been, their lives had been changed, their worlds had been changed, uh, Greek culture came to be, uh, Roman rulers, they both impacted the Jewish life. And during this time, the two religious groups, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, which we hear so much about in the gospel, really gained a lot of influence. 
the religious laws were then kind of elevated in many ways to a new uh, power and status. Some of these uh, leaders taught the way to eternal life was through strict obedience to the literal letter of the law. And that's how they ended up with over 600 rules that they tried to follow day in and day out. And God had promised a remedy to save them from their sin and from their mess that they were waiting. Now, a remedy usually means a treatment or a medicine for a disease or an injury. There's the herbal medicines, there's the um, natural remedies, mom remedies are sometimes what we call them. And they work to varying degrees of success to cure our illnesses or ease our, our sicknesses. Warm tea and honey and maybe with another additive I've heard is often a very favorite solution for a cold. When I was growing up, my mom would bring me seven up and saltine crackers to help settle my stomach if I had a, a stomach ache. And God's remedy for the world was, was the savior. That is his remedy for us. And yet the Jews were still waiting after all of that time. They've been waiting for a savior to come and they are in fact still waiting. And yet then as now the Jews still hope, they are still hoping. For Mary, the angel brought this incredible news that she would be the one to give the birth to the long-awaited Savior. That was good news. Yes, it was certainly scary, but Mary didn't refuse. And when she went to then to her cousin's Elizabeth's house, they both received confirmation that God's spirit was at work in them. For them, at that time, God was anything but silent. Mary's song that bubbled up out of her is filled with rejoicing. It's, she rejoices that God is a promise-keeping God. She rejoices in the work that God alone has done and that God has scattered the proud and the arrogant and brought down the princes and sent the rich away hungry. That's good news, that's good news. And the other good news is that God has shown mercy throughout all of the generations, filling the hungry with good things and lifting up the lowly and the humble. See, Mary knows all of this to be true, and she celebrates all of God's blessings. Mary believes in God, and for her, God was not silent. So we aren't Mary. We say we believe in God even when God is silent, but this statement has really been a challenge for me because I think it's asked me and asks us to wonder and to consider, is God really silent? Or is that our perception? Is that the way we feel? Or maybe what we really mean is that God has abandoned us, given up on us, and left us alone in our own mess. Especially today, we ask, where is God in this chaos, in this division, and pandemic? We wonder and even doubt that Jesus will, in fact, ever return. We look around and we see division. We feel distress and disappointment and depression and despair. And we're sad that the events that are so traditional to us have been canceled. We're scared of getting sick and we are tired of masks and isolation and distancing. We're tired of it all. And when we feel hopeless or crushed or broken, sometimes though, because of those things, we just aren't even aware of God. God may, in fact, seem silent. We can't see where and how God is at actually at work in our lives in the world. And we may wonder if God has forgotten us and we feel there is nothing to rejoice in. Now, I know that some of you probably don't feel that way. But if this is how you are feeling today, God offers us a remedy, and these are remedies. It's a remedy package that will lead us from despair into worry, into, from despair and, and from worry, right smack dab into the joy of the Lord. So here, here's the remedy. First, remember God's promises. In Isaiah 57, verse 15, it says this, For thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place and also with those 
who are contrite and humble in spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the hearts of the contrite. In Psalm 145, verse 14, promises us that the Lord upholds all who fall and raises up those who are bowed down. See, not only does God make promises, God keeps those promises. And from Isaiah, we receive the promise of the Savior. Isaiah 7, 14, look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, which means what? God with us. This is our Jesus Christ. This is our Lord and Savior. So the second remedy, because it's all a package, is to remember that God is a different perspective than ours. One of my favorite verses comes to us from Proverbs 3, verse 5. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight. Do not lean on your own understanding. Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9 says, and I know this is a familiar passage to many of you, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Our, our views and our perspectives are not God's. God sees everything at a 30,000 feet. And we might see them maybe at three feet. So different. Now, God has given us the Bible, and it is full of the Lord's promises and perspectives. And, and I can't even begin to list them all today. But the scriptures point us to the good news. Emmanuel, God with us, is here in the world, even when it doesn't feel like it. Number three, keep your eyes, keep our eyes on Jesus. So God is with us. But too often we, we just turn away. We focus on what is right in front of us or distract ourselves by, feeling, by filling up our schedule or binging on, on, on books or booze or movies or TV or news or, or social media. We, we turn our eyes to whatever remedy will give us hope and revive us. We think those things will save us. Well, God has a word for those. And God calls those idols. And like every idol, they will let us down. They will not restore our hearts. They will not revive our spirits. They will not forgive us. They will not, re they will not forgive us or offer to carry our burdens. They will do none of that. But Jesus, God with us, he will. And you think about his life and what he experienced and he experienced crushing, humiliating, loneliness and despair, desolation and grief. And yet, he turned his eyes to his father and prayed. Through prayer in the garden, Jesus' heart was revived. Remember, before he went to the cross, he, was, he prayed that night in the garden of Gethsemane. And his heart was revived and his spirit was renewed to obediently move into what must have been a very terrifying future. And we have that promise that when we turn to the Lord in prayer, our spirit will be renewed and revived. Remedy four is praise God. Mary's first words in verse 46 were, my soul magnifies the Lord. She proclaimed the greatness of God. She praises God because God noticed her. She was lowly. She's humble. She was just a young, young girl, young teenager, and God, God noticed her. She praised God for all of the great things that God has done, not just for her that she knew personally, but for all of the ways that God had blessed her nation. We praise God. We praise God for your blessings, for our blessings, and praise and thank the Lord for what you have indeed received, because gratitude will change everything. When we feel God is silent or absent. Just encourage all of us to turn to the Lord's promises, to remember God's perspective, to lift our eyes to Jesus, and then give thanks and praise for all of God's blessings. That is the remedy. And I wanted to share a poem that was written by a man named David Dunn, and it's titled, Where Did God Go?
Where did you run? Where did you go? Where did you hide when I was hurting so? You said you'd be there, there with me, but all I saw were my problems staring back at me. Where did you go? I'm left here all alone, wondering to myself, is that promise that you made for me or for someone else? Life is coming at me fast. I feel attacked on every side. My name has become a joke. People have taken all my pride. Where did you run? Where did you go? Where did you hide when I was hurting so? You said you'd be there, there with me. But all I saw were my problems staring back at me. Where did you go? But from the depths of my despair, I turned my eyes up to see. You've always been there, always watching me. I guess you're just hard to see when my eyes are on all the wrong things. You didn't run. You didn't go. You didn't hide when I was hurting so. You were there, there with me, always helping and guiding me. I lift my eyes. I turn my gaze from my problems to your saving grace. Where do we go now? To God be the glory. Amen. invite you to please uh, sit and listen as John comes up and shares some special music. I think he's going to sing us um, something Christmas related. Father, this Advent, we ask that you help us see beyond our circumstances. Help us to rejoice knowing that you are the Savior we need. You keep your promises. You are merciful to us. And you give us not what we deserve, but kindness and love. And compassion in our very desperate situations. Help us to lean into your promises, for your presence, for your love and your power to make it through the tough times that we face. We ask that you renew our, our joy 
and help us to be bold, courageous, and confident as Mary. Help us rejoice and be glad in you and you alone, for you are our Savior, mighty, merciful, promise-keeping, and grateful for your gifts. We offer to you the prayers that we have for all the people. We pray for those who are in the military and our government leaders, and for the leadership of our community. Lord, we pray that you will bring healing and recovery for those who have surgery or illnesses, strokes, those who face tests or upcoming medical procedures or surgery. Lord, we pray for those who have COVID and we pray for those who are in isolation, that their cases may be mild. We especially pray for today for all of those who are grieving the loss of a loved one and for those who are filled with anxiety, depression, and fighting suicide. God, we ask you to wrap your loving arms around our Christmas family. Send them all that they need to give them strength to go on and to uh, celebrate this Christmas with that delightful new baby along with their two other children. Lord, we ask that you help all of us to look to you. For you are the remedy for all that ails us. Strengthen us to live in such a way that others will know we are your disciples by the way that we love. And every day may we turn to you, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, if you would be willing to pull up your mask, uh, and, and I invite you to stay in as you are able, and we will sing verse one of O Little Town of Bethlehem. And now receive the blessing. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold fast to what is good. Return no evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord your God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you now and forevermore. Amen and I will dismiss you this morning. <laughs>